recording. There we go. Okay, so today's class will be Customs and Courtesies. It'll be short and sweet and to the point. So the TLOs are <clears throat> to describe the common terms, sayings, and quotations used in the Marine Corps and describe military customs, courtesies, and honors. The ELOs are to, I, to describe the common nautical terminology used in the Marine Corps, as well as to identify the following. The saluting grades, procedures for rendering honors to dignitaries, boarding and debarking a vessel, and just general reporting procedures, as well as what flags are associated with the Marine Corps, uh, customs associated with celebrating the Marine Corps birthday and traditional honors associated with the Marine hymn. Okay, so for greeting and saluting procedures as shown in the picture to the right. Huh? Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. So the picture on the right shows how to do a proper salute, right? So essentially, on the forefinger, your hand and wrist are straight, and you should be seeing your entire palm, not the sky, and you shouldn't be seeing the back of your hand. Um, so you have to make sure that your upper arm is parallel to the deck, elbow in line with your body, and your forearm is at a 45 degree angle. Generally, you salute someone at max six paces away or closer. But by doing so, you will say the proper greeting of the day and the rank and last name, plus your rank and last name. So for example, good evening, sir. Or good evening, gentlemen, if there's multiple people. And then for like enlisted or whatever, it'd be good evening, Sergeant Ramirez, for example. You salute all officers senior to your rank in any of the armed forces or friendly foreign governments. That's saying... For example, Lieutenant Melvin Melville would be saying good evening to Cam Setney and salute him. But he would say sir, for example. And that, that verbiage is really a big thing to get down, especially when you're at OCS and there are large groups of sergeant instructors, captains, whatnot going by. So if it's if it's a captain, a male captain, and then male sergeant instructors, you're yeah. gonna say good um, afternoon, gentlemen, stuff like that. And if there's like multiple females and males, you say, good afternoon, ladies, good afternoon, gentlemen. You wouldn't say good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, because that sounds weird. I don't know why, but it does. And a little side note is when you're walking with other Marines, the junior Marines walk to the left and one pace behind the senior Marine and you walk in step. This sounds so weird, but it actually makes sense. And it's all about looking nice when you walk. And then when you're walking with just another Marine, you just walk along each other, uh, walk along the side of each other, if that makes sense. So like in a column. Okay. Uh, so rendering honors to dignitaries. You salute all officers, senior to your rank and any other armed forces as well. And you salute to all of the following, for example, like the president, the state governor, secretary of defense, uh, so on and so forth. The most important thing to remember as well is that you salute other armed forces. It should be common sense. Like whoever has a shiny, whether they're in the Navy, Army, or Air Force, you salute them as well. Also foreign governments. So for example, when I was stationed in Okinawa, we would salute if there was an officer from the Japanese Army or whatever the case may be, you salute them, if that makes sense. And it's also customary to salute recipients of the Medal of Honor, but not required by regulation. It's just out of respect for them. And also, <clears throat> to vis uh, visiting is usually received by rendering honors. Gun salute ruffles, uh, the song or the sound ruffles and flourishes, and other myrtle music will be played. And that's when you like render a salute. Um, and then these are all the saluting rules. It seems a lot, but it's it's pretty much like common sense to when and where you would salute. So for example, if you're outdoors, you'll always salute the officer senior to you. And you'll, re you'll be receiving the salute too from your enlisted Marines. Also, <clears throat> when you're inside a building or a gymnasium, 
gymnasium used for driller exercise of, of Marines or inside like weather decks or under roof structures. So like say for if, o, if in OCS it rains, the graduation would be inside of a big gymnasium if they had a gymnasium, then you would be rendering salutes to the officer in there as well. Um, you also salute under arms and not information. Never salute information. You will see at least one person in your life saluting information. Do not do that unless you're the one holding the information. Please don't be that person. An officer um, and you're in a hurry and they have their back to you, just walk to the left of them, render a salute, and you say by your leave, and then they will either acknowledge you or just keep going away. But you at least acknowledge them that they're an officer. Or if they're talking and they're facing you, but you don't want to interrupt, you would do that as well. A little so, side note for the formation yes. thing. I if I interrupt. So usually what we'll do is when we're walking around um, Brownfield or Camp Barrett and we're in formation, there's one person, whether it be the person that's leading us in drill or the person that's leading us to wherever we go, they're the one that's going to salute the officer on behalf of the platoon or the squad or whoever they're leading. Yes. Also, uh, yeah, so when you do see an officer, whether you're in a mass group like Lieutenant Melville was saying or not, just make sure you're within at least six paces to salute. And then, in case colors isn't very much, within six paces. Then for morning and evening colors, that's like the most frequent frequent saluting you will be doing. So in the morning, they'll sound colors, right? Which is around 0800. And then there's four different, <clears throat> I guess, events that could happen when these sound colors in the evenings or in the, or in the mornings. So if you're walking and you hear colors, you hear like, because they give you like a little warning. If you're walking, you're going to face, you're going to stop, get into position of attention, face the music or the flag, whichever one is visible. You'll hold your salute until the last note is played or you hear the carry on sounding. If your information, the person, like Lieutenant Melville was saying, Melville was saying, information, there's one person in charge of the formation, correct? So then that person will halt the formation, call everyone to attention, and that person would be the only one saluting in direction of, no, facing the direction of the unit. And then persons and vehicles, they just stop. Like you could be driving, and you just stop out of nowhere. You put your blinkers on and you wait until all uh, the entire song is playing. And if you're in civilian attire, again, you face the music or the national ensign, you pop into position of attention and you wait for carry on and sound it. Pretty easy, right? You do not salute when you're in when you're working, when you're indoors, except under arms, like if it's the duty or whatever. If both your hands are occupied, if you're in a public setting like a theater or a church, driving unless it's safe to do so, information or within the sight of enemy. It's a lot. Any questions? Cool beans. So I'm sure everyone's familiar with the USMC enlisted rank structure. This one just provides the full name, the abbreviation, and the picture of the insignia, and the grade, so E1 through E9. Um, and obviously, they're broken down to three categories, junior, non-commissioned officers, NCOs, or staff NCOs. <clears throat> and then you got the USMC officer rank structures, going from 01 to 010. And I'm pretty sure they're broken up into three sections as well, but I do not remember the names. I just know 01 through 03 is company grade. 04 and 06 is something else. And then 07, 010 generals? Probably. And then you have these special ones, USMC warrant officer ranks, which are usually enlisted that got like selected, promotedly, um, 
they like send like this application and they become warrant officers. They're also still respected as regular officers. Um, so rule of thumb is less red, the more senior. That's the way you can remember it, uh, where gold is always junior to silver. And fun fact is that infantry weapons warrant officer 0306 is wear a bursting bomb insignia on the left collar and a rake insignia on the right collar. It's pretty cool and they're very rare. If you get to see one, you're very lucky. Yeah, we've seen about two here at TBS. It is very rare. And one thing to note about this is that the warrant officers and specifically second lieutenants, you guys don't salute each other. It's uh, it's that weird kind of in-between mm -hmm. thing where enlisted salutes them, but they don't salute junior officers. Agreed. Forgot that. Thank you. Wait, so is that just for second ah! lieutenant? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I believe it's second lieutenants, and I want to say first lieutenants as well. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, if you ever get the chance to go on a MU, on a Marine Expeditionary Unit, or just in general go onto a naval vessel, uh, it is important to know these two procedures. So when you're boarding a Navy vessel, at the top of the gangway, when boarding a US Navy, you face the aft and you salute the national insignia. So you face wherever the, the United States flag is, you salute it, then you face the officer of the deck, you salute that person and you request permission to come aboard. So you would say requesting permission to come aboard, pretty simple. And then they will grant you permission and then you go along. You go about your way. When you're disembarking, you'll face off to the deck first, salute, request to go ashore. So request permission to go ashore. Once they say um, permission granted, I think that's what they say, permission granted, then you face the aft, you salute the national insignia, then you disembark down the gangway. This generally happens in between morning and evening color. So when the, the flag is up. If the flag isn't up, then you wouldn't follow these procedures. That makes sense. Uh, let's see. Now, so reporting procedures, which everyone is going to go through at some point in their life. When you're going to a new command, so say when you report to OCS or TBS, mainly in TBS, I'm pretty sure, um, you'll be in your service alphas uh, carrying your original orders, your medical orders, your dental records, and all travel receipts. Of course, that was before everything that's happening right now. Uh, you would generally always check in in your service alphas. That's like the norm. Um, so when you're checking into an off to an officer, if it's outdoors, you halt two paces in front of the officer, you render a salute to this officer, and you report by saying, for example, good evening, sir, Lieutenant Corpus reporting as ordered. You hold the salute until it's returned or acknowledged. Um, you always do that. That's like the rule of thumb. When you salute first, you wait and you cut your salute until that person cuts it first. And then you cut it, if that makes sense. You never cut it before they cut it. Um, and then if you're indoors, you center yourself six inches from the front of the officer's desk. If the person is under arms, so say like they have a duty belt on or they have a weapon or whatever the case may be, you render a salute and you report in the same manner. Once you have reported, then they will, this officer will say dismissed and you will state, I, I, sir or ma'am. You take one step back, you render a salute with the proper greeting, good evening, sir or ma'am, and you about face and go about your way. Simple enough. Okay, now. Wait, I have uh, a question ah, before going on. Yes. So if uh, on that last point regarding saluting or addressing indoors, so then um, you're six inches from the desk if they are um, unarmed and if they're armed, you are further away. I'm just trying to get the distance. No, it's the same. It's the okay. same distance, yeah. Because you okay. know if they're inside, they'll be in a desk. So you don't render a salute, though, if uh, they're unarmed? Yes. Okay, got it. So just watch if they have a duty belt or if they have their cover on, basically. I think that's, like, the easiest way you can remember. 
Because generally, if they're under arms, they have to have their cover on. Correct, okay. Lieutenant Melville? Where were you that is that's correct. So, yeah, it says here cartridge belt or armed with a weapon. So our duties here, they they don't have a weapon on them generally. But if they're wearing that belt, they're wearing their cover and they're saluting indoors. Yes. So, so that the even, best indicator is whether they're wearing a cover? Or what, if safe. they should salute or not? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if you're wearing a cover inside, you... Got it, okay. <clears throat> cool. Sorry. Okay, next is flags associated with the Marine Corps. So there's... So colors is referred to a nation, the national flag unit organization distinguishing flag carried by dismounted elements. There's three types of national insignias ensigns, uh, which are the storm flag, which is the smallest and is displayed during inclement weather. You will notice how small it is. Then you have the post flag, which is the medium size, the 10 feet by 19 feet, which is displayed during pleasant weather, which is generally the one that's always up, unless something special is happening, like a holiday or on a Sunday, or say like the generals on deck probably, then you would have the garrison flag, which is this huge flag that's 20 feet by 38 feet. Um, then you have your standards, which are flags carried by mounted, by mounted mechanized motorized or aviation units to identify general officers, such as the president or national and foreign digni dignitaries. The Marine Corps flag is also given the name standard. So just the red beautiful flag. Lastly, you have the Guidon, which is a small rectangular flag carried by company, battery, platoon, or detachment identification flag. It is carried on an eight-foot staff at ceremony. So it's the flags that are hanging in that big office, conference office, conference office at the recruiting station. All those red, beautiful flags, those would be a Guidon. And usually the guide would carry that in a formation. So like each company would have their own. That makes sense. Next. Um, so entering and exiting a vehicle, uh, it's kind of weird, but they use it for some reason. Um, so junior, so when entering a vehicle, any vehicle, juniors generally enter first and they take up the back space. That's where you hear the term, fill it up from the back. And then leaving the most, the most desirable seats in the front for the senior officers. Then when you exit, of course, the senior officers will exit first, followed by the junior Marines. This is also similar to how, on the tangent, this is similar to how who gets fed first. All the junior Marines get fed first, then the seniors eat last. Just a little side note for you guys. Okay, I think this is every Marine's favorite thing in their whole career and that makes being a Marine that much worth it is the Marine Corps birthday customs. So I hope you all know that it is on the 10th of November, 1775 is when it was founded and it's the Marine Corps birthday acknowledgement. All units are provided, all units provide a suitable observance of the Marine Corps birthday on 10 November. Um, on November 1st, 1921, the general the 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General John A. Lejeune, directed a reminder of the honorable service of the Corps by publishing, no, to be published by every command to all Marines throughout the globe on the birthday of the Corps. His message is published and read to the troops, which I'm assuming is similar to this Marine Corps birthday message that every Commandant offers during this time, which is actually pretty cool. And it gives you like this boost of motivation. It makes everything, all the struggles worthwhile. And then you have the cutting, the cake cutting ceremony, uh, which is the first piece is given to the guest of honor who takes a bite and returns the plate to the cake escort. Then <clears throat> the second piece is a play, is placed on a plate with two forks. So the oldest Marine, whether they're retired, a veteran, or who so it be in that unit, <clears throat> or in that birthday, we'll take the first bite and passes it down to the youngest Marine. And it's, just, it's a tradition showing that like the knowledge of the oldest one goes down to the youngest one. And yes, it's pretty cool. I hope you guys get to see it one day. 
question? Yeah, we actually got lucky and had the cake cutting ceremony while I was at OCS uh, hey. six days before we graduated. And um, the youngest Marine was, I think it was 18 years old. And then uh, Colonel Rush, the base commander for um, Brown Field, was actually the one that was the oldest Marine. So it was pretty cool to see. Yeah. I'm telling you, you're going to hear everybody go, ooh, rah, rah. Yeah. People get crazy there. Lastly, I think this is the last one. You have the musical honors. So for the Marines hymn, it was a melody written by, I'm probably going to butcher his name, Jackis Offenbach, and performed for the first time November 19th, 1859. So when you hear this melody, which is very recognizable, uh, playing outdoors, you stop and you come to attention. And when it's playing indoors, you stand up and come to attention. Sometimes you'll have those motivators that start singing, but it's not required. But you should know it by heart. All three stanzas. They're not that hard. And they tell a great story, in my opinion. And then you have the national anthem. Where, oh, for the Marines hymn, you don't salute. For the national anthem, when it's played, all personnel comes to attention, faces towards the music, and salutes until the last note of the music is played. When the national anthem is played at a ceremony involv involving the colors, you face toward the colors and not the music. And that's the only time you would salute, is if you're the national anthem. Aside from like other ceremonies, then you would salute. But for the national anthem, you always salute. Makes okay. sense? Uh, oh, this was the last slide. So to wrap it up, these are the most common saying terms that I personally heard the most when I was enlisted. All the other ones, they're more like for the Navy, but these are the ones you should probably be more familiar with. And you're probably going to hear a lot at OCS, like carry on, resume, which is resume previous activities, field day, which I'm sure everyone's going to love one day, um, the hatch. I hear that a lot at OCS. <laughs> Yes. Um, everyone loves liberty. Um, let's see. You got port, which is left. You got starboard, which is right. You're going to be familiar with the quarter deck if you get in trouble and they try to IT you. Uh, you have secure, everyone hates. And then you have square away time or square away, which you might like as well. And then, yeah. So I think these are pretty cool. As you were, resume former activity. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I thought this picture was pretty cool as well. It was less than 30 minutes. <clears throat> No, yes, no, maybe so. Everyone good? So the customs and courtesies okay. as far as addressing people, that's the biggest thing that you guys will will uh, really see at OCS. I mean, for weeks, I would say probably even up until the ninth week or tenth week of OCS, you're going to see people messing up on addressing staff. Um, you'll get corrected on it. They'll let you know that you messed up. <laughs> And uh, whatever comes from that comes from that. But just really start practicing it now. I remember, uh, I think it was a week or two ago, one of the candidates said, mm -hmm. was talking to me and another lieutenant and said, sirs, you know, stuff like that. You don't say sirs, you say gentlemen. And then there's kind of weird instances like you're around four male captains and one female uh, gunner sergeant you know, weird oddballs like that. But generally, um, it's you address females first and then address the males second. But if it's within the same gender, you're going to address the higher rank first. Or, well, actually, no, you do. If it's a, one captain and then three male, one male captain, three male gunnery sergeants, you're going to say, good afternoon, gentlemen. Or if it's female captain and female uh, staff sergeant, you say, good afternoon, ladies. 
and you'll you'll learn eventually at OCS through trial and error how to address those people and um, what's right, what's wrong, mainly because they'll let you know. Yes. And just to wrap everything up, um, these may seem like really easy, and they are. It's pretty much common sense. And the biggest thing I would say, coming from enlisted already, is that if you want, if you expect them, if you expect like enlisted to render you the proper greeting of the day or to basically be respectful to you, you got to understand how to get it first because you can't just expect them to do it to you just because you're an officer that's not how it goes either absolutely so and and a lot of that happens way too much just because you got shiny doesn't mean anything you have to be a human being first so get no to get respect you got to respect too i'm just gonna end it and to piggyback off that one last note is that you're gonna be a second lieutenant you've been in the marine corps for 10 weeks at that point you already got bars on your shoulder there's going to be sergeant majors walking around that have been officers for or i'm sorry in the military for 25 26 plus years they do have to salute you but you show them respect for what they've done their service and that respect hopefully will be mutual so just be aware of that don't don't go around putting sergeant majors at parade rest and shit because they are, they've been around the block. They know what they're doing. They do have to salute you, but they do have wealth of knowledge. So just remember that. Don't get too. So no one has any questions? Yeah, I have one. This is kind of general, but um, about four weeks out from shipping off to OCS, what are the most uh, like effective things to be focusing on in these last four weeks? Like um, not just physical fitness, but in terms of knowledge and things like customs and courtesy, should I really be drilling this stuff down and kind of waiting to learn about Marine Corps history till I get there? Or should I be trying to retain all that information as well? Um, so like you'll still get, you'll still get these classes at OCS, right? So, I would just say like try to get like the bits and pieces of everything so like for example what i would take away from this class would just be be polite and just say like make sure you render uh, a proper greeting of the day to everyone you know like good morning good afternoon good evening sir or ma'am whatever because that will be one of the first four weeks in ocs they're going to drill that very hard on you like i was telling you we were out in pt the other day like the first four weeks is going to feel like boot camp what all enlisted Marines go through, right? So they're gonna wanna break you down and they're gonna like drill all of this basic things that you would say, it's so common sense into that. And throughout those four weeks, they're also gonna be teaching you history and they're also gonna be teaching you other stuff too. So like just get like a big overview of what it is. So when you get to, when you learn it again in those 10 weeks, you'll be like, oh, I remember that. And it should come a little bit easier than learning it the first time. Is there gonna be any like, very basic stuff they're just going to assume that everyone's going to know coming in and they're not going to teach you before no no I'm they're sure. gonna when yeah. you go in there when you go in there they're going to assume you know absolutely nothing because you got to yes. remember who the sergeant instructors are the sergeant instructors are some of the most seasoned talented drill instructors from their respective recruit depots so you're getting sergeant instructors that were drill instructors for like seven plus years at paris island in san diego They've seen people that have less of their shit together, 18-year-old enlisted guys or 17-year-old enlisted guys that have never lived on their own before, never done anything. And they're going to assume, hey, these guys are fresh out of college. Some of the people here have never had a real job in their entire life. This is their first job. They're going to say, they're, they're going to understand that you don't know all this stuff right off the bat. That's what they're there to teach you for. That's what our sergeant instructor actually told us. He goes, you know, it in a nicer way of what he said is he has to teach the enlisted guys basic things like how to brush your teeth, how to fold your clothes, how to make your bed, stuff like that. He's assuming that you guys have a general baseline of that knowledge being that you've graduated from college 
know how to do that stuff and they're just teaching you the things that you need to know on how to lead junior marines guys that are fresh out of high school or are just new to the military this may be their first job or whatever so what i would say for what you need to know heading out um my last i would say my last week or two before i went to ocs i didn't go too hard on the pt i actually backed off a little bit did a lot of stretching hydrating and mental preparedness because you got to realize are you going plc or OCC. Um, so it's PLC law, but it functions like OCC. I, it's a 10 week program and you commission at the end and then you go back and finish your last year of law school as a inactive yeah. reservist. So, yeah. So for that one, you will be coming back to your hometown. So that's fine. If not, I would say mentally prepare for the fact that you don't know when you're going to be home again. Um, and mentally prepare for the fact I went in knowing, hey, I'm going to get yelled at. It's going to be crazy physically demanding. I'm gonna, it's not going to be some happy, fun place or whatever. It's military boot camp. It's Marine Corps boot camp. It's, you know, we're the hardest branch for a reason. Expect, yeah, it's going to be like that. So just mentally prepare yourself for this is going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And that they're just going with an open mind don't expect anything don't go in being like oh yeah it's going to be like this don't have preconceived notions take it how it is and learn as much as you can while you're there would you agree with that ramirez yes and just have fun it's actually not that bad as it's long as you listen bad. that bad yeah oh i i got a real good tip for you guys juicy one so when you go there, what I, here's the mistake I made. When I went there, I was always taught in boot camp, shut up, do what you're told, don't talk. So I did that. I never talked pretty much the entire time I was there. But because of that, the sergeant instructors thought I was some introverted weirdo that didn't know how to hold a conversation. But then my buddies started hanging out with me on Libo because they thought that I was some introverted weirdo too. Then they saw, uh, hey, I have a personality I could talk. Be a person that's not afraid to talk, speak during classes, whatever. Be somewhat of an outgoing individual, but also don't be too crazy and talking too much. Just don't be that introvert, hey, I'm in my little shell, hoping to God this ends soon. Act like a normal ass person and they won't highlight you. I think uh, for, for me, it, it actually helped to take on some like extra tasks. So, like I, I did armory candidate and like there's other jobs where they have you clean like certain things and you, you get to take charge yeah. of stuff like that. So it gives you an opportunity to know the staff personally, you know, so that, um, you know, you're the one going to them for, for permission and stuff like that. So, it, and it helps them. So, like, so when you get a billet, you already kind of feel comfortable leading people. Yeah, and you guys may have heard Captain Sedney say it before is he says when you're there, just be a good dude. You know, don't be the guy that's backstabbing people or throwing people under the bus, whatever. Just look to help out whenever you can. Don't I noticed when uh you know I was talking about field day the other day and Ramirez Martinez, I'm sure you'll remember this, when we have to move all the racks out, clean the entire floors and you get the people in the back of the squad bay that are just sitting there bullshitting, not trying to help the group at all. You know, the sergeant instructors do see that. The captains do see that. And they really make a point sometimes to call those people out and say, hey, we got people standing around while everybody else is busting their ass. Be the person that's willing to help others. Even if you're struggling yourself, like, you know, you're dead tired from a run or whatever, encourage other people help other people because like they say peer evals will reflect when you start writing about each other and um, people are saying bad stuff about each other and the peer evals that we do they're going to be like oh yeah I remember when I was on the run and I tripped he helped me get up or he encouraged me when I really just wanted to quit 
if you become that person that is there for others, you'll just be so much more successful because how your peers see you is what they write in your evaluations and the staff actually does read those. So it's really important, just be a good person. And a good way, a good way to learn this sort of uh, how to salute, how to report, all that sort of stuff, um, watch other people do it wrong when you get there because they're going to do it wrong. I can show them right now. I'll turn on my video. Yeah, there, there's... Oh, let me stop sharing my screen. What's I'll show you guys the way that people... Here. Oh, yeah. I'll keep, I'll keep recording. I'm trying to stop. Oh, there you go. Oh, I can't yeah. see it all right am i on the video or what's going on i see a video you see my video something wow yeah. martinez all right how do i show my video you want to share your screen like a youtube video or like a webcam There all right, go. can we see me now? Yeah. yeah. Don't do that bullshit salute. You'll see yeah. some people, they call it the pilot salute. They go like this. You know, you want to lift your arm up parallel to the deck. Bring your hands in. Make sure that you see the outside of your hands and not the inside of your palm. You want your palm just straight up knife hand, flat like that knife hand and people so up right there right to the corner of the brow that's where i salute and keep it crisp too you'll see some people just do some real like i said they say the pilot salute where they go like this you'll hear the staff say that sometimes people don't want to salute them wow. so they'll like bend down and tie their shoes or they'll turn away or pretend to go into some door like get a crisp salute know who you're saluting and just pop it and then remember if you're the lower ranking person you're going to want to salute first and you don't cut that salute until the senior person cuts their salute so if you're a lower rank you render the first salute wait till they salute you back and then they cut theirs then you cut theirs Anybody got that? Noted. Want, to, want to see the pilot salute one more time? I'll do that. Thank you so much. I, yeah. I hope uh, this was informative and um, stand by for Thursday's class, I guess. <laughs> Thank you very What's much. Thursday's Appreciate class. class. Denada. Thank you. Yeah, good class. Thank you. Denada.